Well, let's head to Nigeria now, where there have been some developments when it comes to cleaner energy. Husk Power Systems has launched its first six sol solar hybrid mini grids. Now, this marks the first time the company has rolled out multiple mini grids at one time under the Nigerian Electrification Project. Funded by the World Bank and the African Development Bank and implemented by Nigeria's Rural Electrification Agency, the initiative will provide clean, reliable and affordable electricity to about 5,000 households and 500 businesses in Doma and Lafia in the north of Nigeria. Well, let's discuss this project further with Husk Power Systems co-founder and CEO, Manoj Asina. Great to have you on the show with us today, sir. Now, this project will be a first for Nigeria uh, in terms of launching multiple mini-grids at the same time. Can you explain to us the role a project like this uh, plays in improving Africa's ability to achieve meaningful scale uh, in its power sector uh, and in solving its power issues and, of course, in its clean energy goals as well? Thank you. And thank you for having me on your show. Uh, so we just launched, like you said, a set of six mini grids that are 100% renewable in the Nasarwa state of Nigeria. Uh, this really plays very well in the country of Nigeria because the national electrification program that the country has integrates the mini grid as a part of its national electrification strategy. So it is not going to be a dozen or two dozen. We are going to do thousand mini grids uh, just in the country of Nigeria, which will become uh, an extension, if you will, of the grid electrification. And we are doing that with 100% renewable source of energy and thereby we are directly leapfrogging to 100% clean power rather than transition from, let's say, coal or oil or natural gas and then transition to uh, a renewable source of energy. So I see Minigrid playing a humongous role in terms of catapulting the whole African continent. And we are only in Nigeria and, and Tanzania, but mostly in Nigeria to a renewable power and provide 24 seven access of electricity to people in the rural parts of Nigeria in our case. Mm. Now, of course, mini grids, uh, they have been hailed as a cost effective uh, solution for Africa. Uh, but stakeholders in the sector say the sector hasn't grown quicker uh, because of two things, a favorable regulation and, of course, finding the funding. So tell us how Husk Power was able to raise that funding and also work with Nigeria's government to achieve this project. So uh, those two reasons are, are definitely very important. There are two more pillars to the success of any mini grid. One is uh, what you call LCOE, levelized cost of energy. And the fourth one is, how do you really create a demand in the rural areas where nobody had electricity to begin with? So I would say there are four reasons why the mini grid has not truly scaled at, uh, let's say, Pan-Africa level or global level. And Nigeria is very important because Nigeria adopted a mini grid policy back in early 2017, which makes it very clear for mini grid developers to come in, get licenses, and these are all one-stop uh, shop kind of arrangement. So we don't have to wait for years to get licensed to do, let's say, the next 100 mini grids. That is playing a very important role for us. Uh, and that that is one of the reasons why we entered Nigeria. Secondly, the, the funding. Of course, any investor who uh, brings in capital, they want their due returns, right? And uh, regulation forms the first basis of operating a business. So to make sure that the investors get their due returns, the two other factors that I talked about are critical. Levelized cost of energy that we are able to generate and distribute to people in the rural areas so that it is affordable for people who are using supply. And lastly, but very, very importantly, demand. The demand during daytime doesn't really exist because most people are very agricultural driven and there is no productive uses of energy. That's the programmatic approach that we at Husk bring or brings to the society or the community because our goal is not just to provide electricity, but to really catalyze the socioeconomic development by accelerating the productive uses of power. By that I mean, suppose you have carpenter shop that might be using manual process to build five furniture pieces. 
we transition them to sawmill, planing machine, all of a sudden that five furniture pieces goes to 50 furniture pieces. So that's the kind of intervention that we bring, which is very unique. And com combination of these four things then makes Minigrid very, very replicable and scalable. And right. that's what we bring, which is quite differentiated. Right. Now, of course, Husk is uh, planning to expand to a fleet of more than 100 mini-grids uh, in Nigeria within the next two years. Also, you're looking to expand uh, these projects further in Africa. So as we discuss uh, uh, Africa's climate goals at this year's COP26, what are your plans uh, to move forward uh, with this in Africa? What role do you think they will play uh, in helping Africa reach its climate goals? And certainly, do you think the regulatory and business environment in Africa is ready for such a project. So one good thing about if you look at the telecom sector, right, they transitioned, so most people in Africa, as I understand, they did not have to go through this landline connection. They directly catapulted or leapfrogged to a telecom, which is a cell phone network. We see Minigrid uh, uh, catalyzing that in that sense. So in Nigeria, like we have discussed, it is the regulation or favorable regulation that allows us to do this. We are looking at other countries like Liberia, Zambia, Uganda, and others where we can bring the same exact technology and with favorable regulation that has started happening. And the World Bank that is bringing uh, uh, some capital to these countries, we bring many grids that is from day one, 100% renewable. So we become part of the energy transition from day one. It is not backward looking. And that's why I see this as a very catalytic work in terms of clean energy transition with 24 seven power access to people in Africa continent. Hmm. Well, we do have to leave it there, but many thanks, Mr. Sina, for joining us on us on the show today and for those great insights. That, of course, is Manoj Sina. He's the CEO and co-founder of Husk Power Systems.